Okay, so we're sitting here with attorney Alexandra Lugaro. We basically want to talk about your experience. Um, you've been to Florida recently, um, and you've been kind of giving advice to people um, not to go up there without a plan. So can you tell me, you know, what you've been seeing while you're up there, what the opportunities are, and what people should and shouldn't do um, before they go? During the last week, I was the, at the Orlando International Airport. There are more than 1,000 families who are arriving each day to the airport. When they, these families were interviewed by different organizations, most of them were coming in without a plan. They had no housing, they had no employment, they had no, um, um, no money, most of them. And the problem with coming without a plan is that you're going from Puerto Rico, where you're experiencing a lot of necessity, to going to another place where you, where you won't have your network of supporters of your family or your friends, and you will ex experience the same necessity out there. My advice to people, and I understand many are, li are leaving Puerto Rico because they lost their employments, they lost their houses, but once you come into the United States, it's very important to make alliances with different organizations that you may apply for employment before coming in. You need to uh, research on which state there will be housing opportunities. Officials from the government of Orlando told us to advise people that there were no housing, affordable housing available. So they were going to put people on lists to take them to re to big um, refugee places and in order for them to be able to transition them to other states where they could get employment for them. So it's very important for Puerto Ricans and I can understand the, how the desperate need of, of having, uh, of giving a new opportunity or providing for their families, but it's very important for Puerto Ricans not to leave Puerto Rico without a plan, to start applying for jobs before they leave, to um, have a, a significant amount of money for emergencies if they leave, and to establish connection with any family member or friend to live at their home. Uh, while they make the transition process because we've seen families that are living in their cars. They're mm. sleeping in cars at malls. So it's very important uh, having a plan and establishing the right alliances before leaving. Do you have a list or maybe knowledge of some of those agencies that people can actually call ahead? At least in, in Florida, Latino Leadership and the National Puerto Rican Leadership Education Council, they're both working and providing this experiences. They're giving people not only the, uh, the mentorship on what they will need to to apply for school for their children, for employment, but they're also making them, um, uh, using their network to put these people in touch with, and so they are, their opportunities are more in Florida. But this is only in Florida. Yeah, this right. model replicates in Connecticut, in New Jersey, in New York, and California, Texas. So we are not providing adequate help for all these Puerto Ricans that are moving to the United States and, and more that will be moving in the next weeks. Yeah, and I think that, that there also has to be um, an awareness about the difference in the cost of living. Um, Florida, Connecticut, New York, these states aren't um, cheap. No, that's very important what you said because many people tell me, oh, I'm earning here seven dollars and they're offering me their twelve dollars an hour. When you compare this to the cost of living, many times people will need four jobs to rent an apartment. So it's very important for them to know what's the cost of living, how many they should earn in order to be able to pay for an apartment. Are there apartments of that quantity available in that state? That's okay. very important. What are, what are they telling people in Orlando? I'm just curious. When people get off the plane. When people get off the plane, they have this welcome sign. If you're Puerto Rican, you came after Hurricane Maria, you're welcome. Come to this booth. There are a lot of tables where they give you brochures about um, vaccination, schools, employment. But if you don't go from the brochure and to the link, mm -hmm. or you don't apply, there's not much help besides from the brochure. And that's that's a problem. You have organizations like Latino you know, Leadership, which are giving people food, like a, a and 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 things to hold up for a few weeks, and clothing, and they're helping them get an employment. But most of the operation that's going on in Florida at the airport, it's giving them brochures. You can do this. You can do that. And most of them tell me when I go to the link, they're freezed. I'm not able to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important. It's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. People need to make some research before they leave, especially if they're leaving with children. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing the most children and old people leaving with different conditions, medical conditions that are going to get aid in the United States. Right. Now, let me ask you something. You've been very vocal in the past about local issues. Um, what is your opinion about how the recovery efforts have been in the past 
35 days, 36 days since the hurricane struck? Well, I had, I had avoided making comments on, on government response since I ran for governorship in the last election. I already have the label, the politician label, so anything I say would be considered a critic, even though it's the truth. But there comes a time you, you can no longer be silent when you see all the people that aid hasn't gotten there, central of the island, the west part of Puerto Rico, Morovis, Barranquitas, Ciales, Hayuya, Utuado. People are not receiving the aid. Many people you go by there and they tell you, not a governmental official has come by. I haven't received a bottle of water. They're going to extreme necessity. People are dying because of lack of medical supplies. And the problem is precisely the place where we're standing. We have centralized the emergency. Everything is running from this convention center. It's very pretty and all, but they don't know what's really happening to these people in the field. And if you don't know what's happening in the field, you won't be able to design a logistic that would be able to get the resources and the assets to where they're most needed. That's it. I think, and, and I say it as a constructive criticism, and I said it yesterday to the governor, we must regionalize the emergency. We must divide the emergency in regions and take all these thousands of personnel that are here right now, take them and tell them, okay, you're gonna be responsible for Barranquitas. You're gonna be responsible for uh, uh, Naranjito uh, because we'll see uh, a, more, a speedy recovery that way. But everyone here operating from a place, they don't know what's really happening. It's, it's not gonna uh, happen. So that's your suggestion, just get it's everybody out there. We need to regionalize the emergency, we need to prioritize, and we have to get the assets. We have to get the telecommunications up. It's very difficult to coordinate volunteers. I had I have 3,000 volunteers across the island. It's very difficult to coordinate volunteers when you don't have communications. We had a donation from GE Appliances of 22 solar filters that will produce 10,000 to 30,000 gallons of water each day of safe water. In order to give this to municipalities, we have to drive personally to municipalities because they have no communications, no even the majors or the uh, teams. That's why um, communications must be set up. And I, I it's going to sound horrible. It's kind of a conspiracy theory, but I think they have dragged their feet with communications because as long as there are no communications, people don't know what's happening in the rest of the island. And the only uh, information we receive is the one that comes from government. So they're able to manipulate public opinion. But now, pol uh, political perception can't be what's really what really matters. The recovery must be what really matters. And I think at this time, political perception is winning over the recovery. And that's why people are suffering so much. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you for the opportunity. Time. Thank you.